Let's say you want to sell something online, but what you're selling is not something digital. It's more like a physical object. So what are your options? You could sell it on Amazon, you could sell it on Facebook Marketplace, or alternatively, if it's something you created for your business, you might sell it somewhere else. Today, we're going to look at a company that puts the power in the seller's hands. Welcome to Stock Stories. All right, all right, all right, all right. Welcome to Stock Stories, the show where we decode the business behind the stock. Hi, I'm Alex Mason. I'm your stock storyteller. My wife and I went from not knowing anything about investing to becoming financially independent by 30 years old. And my goal is to empower you with the knowledge and skills that you need to successfully invest in the stock market. Now, this is a show that explores the fundamentals of how businesses work and teaches you to become a better thinker. So we're studying the entire S&P 500 and more companies on this show, and we're also studying mental models. So you ready? Let's get into today's episode where we're talking about Shopify, which is a leading e-commerce company that helps businesses sell products online. Tobias Lutke loved programming when he was a kid, and he got his start by reprogramming the code of video games when he was really young, and he just fell in love with it. Now, when he grew up, and he was 21 years old, he lived in Germany at the time, and he moved from Germany to Canada. And eventually, he became one of the developers of this computer framework called Ruby on Rails. Now, if you don't know what that is, Ruby on Rails isn't a programming language. It's more like a framework that allows programmers to quickly build and scale web applications. Now, for example, major companies like Airbnb, Twitch, Hulu and Square, they all use this Ruby on Rails framework and hint, hint, Shopify uses it too. (laughs) Now, Tobias and a friend set out to create a business. Now, even though Tobias was a programmer, he wanted to create some kind of different business and him and his friend got together and they said, hey, let's make a snowboarding company. So they wanted to make a snowboard business and they started from their garage and they started trying to sell these snowboards. Now, this was back in 2004. And so they wanted it to be an online business. They wanted to be able for people to go to their website and purchase them. The problem was when Tobias went looking for an online solution to his problem to actually sell the snowboards, he didn't like what he saw. There just was not a great option at the time for selling merchandise online. So Given his programming background, he decided to create a solution. And so in the fall of 2004, Shopify was born. Now, with a little bit of help from some snowboard sales money that they made, as well as money that they got from an angel investor in Toronto, the company started getting on its feet and started selling their web services, essentially, to other people. And that's how Shopify started to grow. And then over time, the business grew significantly and it gradually transitioned to a lot of different smaller businesses within the broader platform. Now, if you are getting value out of this episode, I would be very grateful if you took one second to tap that like button. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's talk about the business model now. How does this business work? And one of the first questions I like to ask when I'm researching a new company is the most basic question of all, which is why does this company exist? Why is it even here? It has to serve someone in some capacity in order to exist, right? So that's what I asked with Shopify. Well, Shopify helps small and medium-sized businesses sell things online. That's what they do. And the way that they do this is in a way that's relatively simple for the entrepreneur they handle setting up your digital storefront and they connect it to a lot of other different services. Now, for example, they have an app store with over 6,000 different apps, and that allows merchants to customize their digital storefronts. 
Now they seem pretty highly integrated with other platforms. For example, they're integrated with Instagram, Google Pay, et cetera. And they even have integrations with companies like Walmart and TikTok. Now Shopify has over 1.75 million merchants and they serve all sizes of businesses, but mostly on the smaller and medium size end. Now about half of these businesses are in the United States. About a quarter of them are in Europe, 15% in Asia, and then the rest are spread throughout the rest of the world. So this is definitely an international business. Now the company develops its own software and then it sells it on a subscription basis. That's their main business. Now, a lot of businesses use the subscription model because it's very powerful at generating consistent recurring revenue. That's kind of like the best revenue you can have as a business is consistent recurring revenue that of course is growing too. Now, one cool aspect of this business is their culture. They seem pretty focused on helping the small business owner thrive. And they even launched the series via Shopify studios called I quit. And it profiles people ditching their nine to five jobs to start their businesses. So it's pretty interesting stuff. People definitely want to work for themselves these days. And the internet is definitely a growing trend that's facilitating that for a lot of people. And you can see it everywhere online that you look. And in fact, I bet if you go to YouTube right now and just search for Shopify, most of the videos that will come up will be focused on how to help you launch your own store. So there are two main branches to this business. There are subscription solutions and merchant solutions. Now let's look at subscription solutions first. Subscription solutions is the main engine of this business. There is a pretty low monthly fee of $30 per month if you want to get started with Shopify. And this is the heart of Shopify's revenue stream. So there's a low barrier to entry for the entrepreneur who's just getting started to get a lot of services. And when merchants sign up for this, they get their own online store. They get a lot of essential features like the ability to sell via social media or a website design, for example. Now, Merchant Solutions is the other side of the business. Now, there's all sorts of things that we could get into here, but just to give you a sampling of the other types of things that they do, they have their own payment processor, which about two thirds of merchants use that service from them. They also have shipping services. You can buy ads from them, email marketing. You can even buy point of sale hardware for your business, and you can even get loans from them if you want capital to fund your business. So they have this wide array of offerings that they've gradually built in addition to the subscription service revenue. Now, another thing I want to discuss here is the concept of competitive advantage. And this is something that I've talked about in prior episodes of the show, but I want to spend more time talking about it more consistently in episodes going forward when analyzing companies, because this is just so important. It's just so key as an investor to understand what sets a company apart from the competition. Because if you don't set yourself apart from the competition, then you won't be in business for very long. <laughs> so let's talk about Shopify's competitive advantage. Does Shopify have a competitive advantage or not? And from my analysis and research, I think that it does. The thing is Shopify is vertically integrated. What does that mean? Well, it means that within the main business, there are other related businesses that complement the core offering that the business has. And Shopify's primary business, as we've talked about, is selling an e-commerce website. But because of the other businesses around it, it is so much more than that. It's really this all-in-one solution for the small entrepreneur. Now think about if you didn't have Shopify as a small entrepreneur, I mean, you wouldn't have this all in one package. You would have to maybe piece different things together from a bunch of different services. And that takes not just a lot of money and time, but also just mental bandwidth for something that is already really intense, like starting and running a growing business. So Shopify has a lot of value there. And as far as the competition goes, 
you could go to other places like Etsy. We talked about Etsy a couple episodes ago. Now, Etsy's competitive advantage, I think, is a little bit different. They provide this all-in-one solution, but they do it for niche kind of handcrafted items. Shopify is trying to get into that space. But in general, Shopify seems like they're not really focused on that. They just want to serve everybody. Um, but they do have a lot of scale. And I think that that is a competitive advantage is their vertically integrated scale. Okay, now let's get into the financials of the business. As an investor, we definitely want to understand the numbers, at least at a basic level. How is this company trending? Where are things going with the numbers? So let's go ahead and take a look right now. And we're just going to go ahead and look up Shopify and ticker symbol is SHOP. And notice that it trades both on the New York Stock Exchange as well as the Toronto Stock Exchange because this is a Canadian based company. So if we scroll down here, this is the stock performance and we're not really concerned about that right now. We're going to look at the fundamentals. So let's go ahead and go to financials. And over the last several years, we can look at the data. And what we have right here are the three main financial statements of the business, the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. The income statement tells us the profitability of the business. So is it making money or not? <laughs> Pretty important to know. The balance sheet tells us what the company owns versus what it owes. So think of it as like the net worth of the business. And then over here, we have the cash flow statement. This is interesting because it tells us how much actual money is coming in and out of the business over time. And we're not going to go over all of this, of course, but just some key numbers. The most important one in the income statement here, we got revenue. And so let's go ahead and click on that. Look at this. Over the last several years, revenue has just been growing really fast. I mean, look at this in 2020 pandemic year. Revenue went from one and a half billion to almost $3 billion. It literally doubled over a year. And even if we look at the last 12 months, so I'm recording this in 2022 in February. And so in 2021, the company made over $4.2 billion in revenue. So it increases revenue significantly. And this is an excellent sign because we know that Revenue is key to a successful business. But let's also look a little bit at the profits. So I'll just deselect the revenues. And now what I'm doing is going to the net income. So net income, this tells us how much profit the company has made. And we can see that in 2016, 17, 18, 19, the company was losing money, <laughs> losing money. Now this could be um, deceiving, especially if you're a new investor, it looks really bad, right? It looks really bad, like profits are negative and they're getting worse. But then in 2020, whoa, the company made a ton of money. They made over $300 million. But the thing is, this doesn't really tell the whole story. The company has been reinvesting a lot in their business. And this is really common with smaller high growth companies. That's exactly what's happening here. You have this period of time where it's not profitable at all, but then all of a sudden they have what's known as operating leverage and then boom, you just get all of these profits coming. And the key is revenue growth, right? But that's just one example here. And then another thing we want to look at is earnings per share because profits are great, but as long as it goes to the shareholders, that's really what matters for you and I as investors. Because if the company has too many shares, and even if they're making more money, that money gets divided around more and more shares. So it's what's called dilutive to the stockholder. So over here with earnings per share, earnings per share has been going up also, uh, mainly because the company has just been doing so well recently in the past couple of years. It looks like from a cash perspective, they have been crushing it. I mean, their cash levels have been going up every single year over the past several years. In the end of 2020, they had over $6.4 billion in cash compared to 2019. They had just barely $2.5 billion. 
So they more than double their cash position over time. And some of this is from issuing shares in the market and selling new stock to the public. But a lot of this also is just from the organic growth of the business. The business itself is growing really fast. So this is a great sign. I love to see the cash going up. Now, I also want to take a look at the debt. Okay, long-term debt. Look at this. The company had no long-term debt for many, many years. But in 2020, they borrowed a little bit. And then as of most recently, they have just under a billion dollars in debt, which is really not a lot of debt when you, when you look at how much money this company is making. So I'm really loving this balance sheet here. The cash flow statement, again, this tells us how much money is actually going into and out of the business for many different things. And one main thing we want to look at is cash from operations. This tells us how much is the core business really generating over time. And we can see that similar to the revenue growth, this company is just crushing it. I mean, they have 9.32 um, from cash from operations, I believe that's $9 million. And then they're going to $70 million in 2019. And then it just exploded during COVID $424 million cash from operations. And I expect this trend to continue just because of the secular trends behind this company that we've mentioned already. So things are looking good from a cash flow perspective. The company is investing a lot into their business as well. That's what the cash from investing line item is for. And then they're also raising a lot of money by issuing stock. So we can see here issuance of common stock. It seems like every year they issue about a billion dollars or so in new stock. And that also helps keep the company funded. All right. So now that we looked at the financials a little bit and dug into the numbers, we also want to think about what are the major risks to this business? Well, the company does have competition from a lot of other large players in the e-commerce space. It seems like every tech company wants a piece of e-commerce right now. And Amazon is one, Etsy is another, and maybe to a lesser extent, Facebook marketplace, um, they might get into e-commerce a little bit more over time. So Shopify seems like they want to serve every type of entrepreneur, large and small, and they're involved in so many businesses that they could lose their focus, I think, if management isn't careful. Now, additionally, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that this business has just started to become profitable. So there isn't a lot of data yet as far as profits go, but the trends are looking pretty good. So why would I or would I not consider researching this business further for the purposes of investing in its stock? Well, Shopify seems like a pretty powerful business that's making a name for itself in the e-commerce space. I think that's pretty clear. Just looking at the numbers, looking at the business itself. One company that comes to mind when I think about Shopify is actually Alphabet, which we talked about a few weeks ago. Alphabet is able to do this moonshot approach because they have this core business that's so profitable that they can afford to spend a lot of money in a lot of different projects that are very high risk. And it seems like Shopify might be a little similar. They have this core subscription business that's really what's generating the profits. But then over here, they've got Shopify studios, they've got their ads, they've got email marketing, they've got all these different little projects trying to tie everything together. So I'm wondering if that's a good idea or not. I think it remains to be seen. Shopify is increasing its revenue quickly, but I'm curious to see if they're being wise with the shareholder capital that they're getting and if, it, if they're not just wasting it on pet projects. So it's a cool business because essentially it's a play on digital entrepreneurship. And I really like that. I like the recurring business model. As far as the stock price, it's close to $1,000 right now as I'm recording this, somewhere between $900 and $1,000. And if you look at a price to earnings ratio on that, it's something like over 300 once you strip away the one-time gains in 2021. 
So that's a pretty high valuation. But this company also is amazing from a numbers perspective. So it's a little bit tricky to figure out whether or not this is a buy or not. Okay, so that's what I think about Shopify. But I want to know, what do you think? Is this stock worth buying or not? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're hungry for more, I've created over 200 free podcast episodes on many different companies already, also many mental models. So go ahead and click the link in the description to check that out. Thank you so much. And I'll see you on the next one.